Do you want to grow spiritually? If not, you might as well move on from this video. But if you do, then stick around because in this video, I'm going to tell you the number one key to spiritual growth. Hey, welcome to The Bible in Life. My name is John Whitaker, and if you're looking for videos to help you grow in your faith and grow as a disciple of Jesus, then be sure to subscribe to this channel. And if this video itself is quite helpful to you, then be sure to hit the like button down below and share this video. All right, let's get into this. If you were... Uh, if you knew you were going to die in the next 24 hours and you were with people that you had invested a lot of time and energy and people who meant a lot to you, maybe your kids, maybe you're a teacher and it's your student. If you're with people who it's like, man, there's just some things I want to make sure they get figured out before I go and you know you're going to die in 24 hours, wouldn't you tell them some of the most important things to you? Well, in this video, we're going to actually look at that very situation with Jesus, where he shares some of the most important things because he knows he's going to die in the next 24 hours. But before we get to that, let's set that up. As I said in the intro, we're going to talk about the number one activity for spiritual growth in this video. And spiritual growth is the result of discipleship to Jesus. In other words, the end goal is spiritual growth, and the means of getting there is living as a disciple of Jesus. So what's the primary thing disciples do? Well, the primary thing disciples do is they spend time with their rabbi, their teacher. They're with him. They listen to him. They learn from him. They do that through the means of relationship. That's the way discipleship works. A disciple, somebody who's chosen to be with their teacher in order to become like their teacher. In our case, that means we've been, we've decided to be with Jesus in order to become like Jesus. In fact, in Mark chapter 3, when Mark describes Jesus calling his first disciples, Mark says this, that Jesus called them to be with him. Catch that. Jesus called them to be with him. And it was through the vehicle of being with him that they were going to become like him. That's how discipleship works. And that tells us what the number one key to spiritual growth actually is. It's being with Jesus. So here's Jesus. It's the night before his crucifixion. He knows the next day he's going to be hanging on a Roman cross and he's going to die. And he's with his closest friends, these disciples that he has spent three years with, pouring his life into them, training them, teaching them, preparing them for the mission that he, he has in store for them. And now he's about to depart and he's sharing with them some of his most important teaching. And in that context, we get John chapter 15. John 15 and Jesus says these words to his disciples. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Jesus is using an analogy here, and he's going to use the analogy of a grapevine. Why? Because it was so familiar to the audience, and it made perfect sense to them. Grapevines were everywhere, growing grapes, producing wine from grapes. That was uh, just a staple part of the Mediterranean experience. The Palestinian experience. And so Jesus is using imagery that was very familiar, and he's going to compare himself to a grapevine. So he says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. In other words, I'm that, that part of the vine that's always there, that always sticks around, and you're the branches that are attached to the vine. And so he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. Every branch that abides in me bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Do you see the point of the imagery? Jesus is saying, abide in me. And if you do that, you will bear much fruit. In fact, Jesus' goal, as we said in an earlier video, is to make us good trees. I'll put that in the cards up above where you could watch that video if you haven't checked it out already. But the goal of being a disciple is to become a good tree that produces good fruit. But here's the thing. Focusing on producing good fruit isn't how you reach the goal. We don't try to bear fruit, right? It's like, okay, I'm, I'm going to just bear good fruit today. I'm just going to do the things Jesus wants. I'm just going to try really hard. That's not the primary thing we do in order to become a good tree. If we want to bear much fruit and be like Jesus, then how do we do that? Well, Jesus says we do that by abiding in him. That's the number one activity of 
being a disciple. That's the number one activity for spiritual growth, abiding in Jesus, being with Jesus, sticking with him, connecting to him, remaining in him. Do you want to grow spiritually? Then you have to rearrange your life to be with Jesus. In fact, if we will make it our ambition to be with Jesus, then that becomes like a transforming friendship. And through that vehicle of being with him, we will become like him. And that's the end goal of spiritual growth, is to be like Jesus from the inside out. And that happens through this transforming friendship where we abide in Jesus. We listen to him. We take his teaching into ourself. We learn his way of life. We learn what's important to him. We learn what he values. We learn the way he sees himself, the way he sees other people, the way he sees God. We are with him. And through being with him, we learn what life is supposed to be like, that Jesus shows us the way we're made to live. And so we become like him. And you want to know the good news about that is, as we spend time with Jesus, and as we begin, therefore, to bear much fruit and become like Jesus, our joy is multiplied. Look at John 15, 11. As Jesus ends this teaching about abiding in him and being with him, Jesus says this. He says, these things, these things about abiding in Jesus, right? These things I have spoken to you so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be overflowing. Don't miss that. These guys have been with Jesus for three years. They've sat around the campfire. They've traveled to holiday meals with him, right? Like, like they know him. And if Jesus didn't have a kind of joy that, that you would have wanted, they would have called his bluff, right? Like Jesus radiated living joy. And he says in this moment that if you will abide in me, and you'll allow me to abide in you, right? Like if you'll stick with me, you'll remain in my teaching, you'll listen to me, you'll do life with me. If you'll do that, then guess what? My very same kind of joy can be yours. You can have that joy. So when we abide in Jesus, we bear much fruit, and the end result is our joy overflows, and God is pleased, and God is glorified. And so the number one key for spiritual growth is abiding in Jesus. And that doesn't happen on accident. That doesn't happen just because we think it's a good idea. That happens because we intentionally choose to rearrange our life around Jesus to make sure we carve out space in our day and in our week to be with him. That's the heart of discipleship. And that's the heart of spiritual growth.